everyone, it's Sam aka Ocean Unknown and welcome back to my channel. This video is the first episode of a new series I am doing of video essays about looking at characters through the theatrical lens, which is pretty much just me using the knowledge I have learned from being a theater major in college to talk about my interests and characters that are in media that I love. So let's get started with the video. Ever After High is a doll line owned by Mattel that started in 2013 and ended in 2016. While Ever After High is primarily a doll line, there was also an animated series along with multiple books. The story revolves around the children of the world's most celebrated fairy tale characters going to the boarding school, Ever After High, to study and fulfill the role of their parents' stories. These characters confront the conflict of embracing or rejecting destiny, which breaks the students into two sides, the royals and the rebels. Royals are characters who think that every Everyone should adhere to tradition and carry out the destiny of their fairy tale ancestors. Most of the royals are, as the name implies, royalty and are privileged enough to get a happy ending by bloodline. The leader of the royals is Apple White, the daughter of Snow White. Rebels are characters who think that everyone should be able to choose if they want to have their planned destiny or not. Although this is not true for all of the rebels, many of them are descendants of villains or characters who have tragic endings to their stories. The leader of the rebels is the character this whole video is about. Raven Queen, the daughter of the Evil Queen. Like I just mentioned, Raven Queen, who is voiced in the animated series by Erin Fitzgerald, is the daughter of the Evil Queen from Snow White, and she is the leader of the Rebels at Ever After High. On the Ever After High Wikipedia page, it says that Raven is the main character, which I agree with. However, the show paints her as a co-main character with Apple White. She, like the majority of the characters in Ever After High, is 15 and is going into her sophomore year of high school. A little detail about her is that she does have magic and can cast spells, which are hereditary from her mother. However, unlike her mother, Raven is the furthest thing from an evil person. Playing the role of the villain doesn't suit her kind personality, so she starts the rebel movement by rejecting her destiny. While she is not the first student at Ever After High to dislike her destiny, she is the first to take action against tradition and conformity. She actively signs up for classes that are traditionally for good fairy tale characters like music classes and princessology. But Raven's biggest protest against the tradition of the school occurs in Chapter 1, Episode 10, The Tale of Legacy Day, where Raven refuses to sign the story book of legends which is basically a confirmation to fulfilling your parents destiny in ever after high now i will go over a couple episodes of the animated show including the specials to discuss more of raven's personality and some of her story throughout ever after high in this series depending on the character i'm covering I won't always cover every single episode they're in. Ever After High is also an episodic series with an overall story implemented into what Key and Carlisle, who in a way inspired this whole YouTube series, calls Keystone Episodes. So not every single episode of this show is important to the plot. In this case, since Raven is in 60 of the 76 episodes, including the seven specials of Ever After High, I will not be covering all of those 60 episodes. <laughs> Starting with Apple's tale, the story of a royal, we as an audience are introduced to Apple before Raven even appears on screen. I will get to this later in the video, but these scenes of Apple set up a major factor in the series as a whole. Apple and Raven are foils for each other. Raven enters her dorm room and finds out that Apple will be her roommate, which Apple did completely behind her back and without Raven's consent. As the students go to their legacy day rehearsals, Raven asks the principal of the school, Milton Grimm, what would happen if she didn't take the pledge of carrying out her mother's destiny. He tells her to erase that dangerous thought from her head and she leaves. In Raven's Tale, the story of a rebel, we see Raven side with the story on the first day of the new school year at Ever After High. Raven brings her luggage and walks with her best friend, Madeline Hatter, who is the daughter of the Mad Hatter. Mad Madeline tries to reassure Raven that nobody thinks she's evil just because her mother was. Maddie is quickly proven wrong by a scene that intentionally mirrors the scene where Apple and her friend Briar Beauty, the daughter of Sleeping Beauty, enter the school. Rather than being bombarded with love and positive attention, everyone flees at the sight of Raven. In the cafeteria, which Ever After High calls the Castleteria, she is approached by Dexter Charming, one of the Charming siblings. This also mirrors Apple White's scene with Daring Charming in the last episode. Dexter has a big crush on Raven and he tries to flirt with her. She is apprehensive about his kindness towards her because nearly everyone either hates her or fears her. Dexter and Raven throughout the series kind of have this bond over being outcasts and being seen not for who they actually are, just who people think they should be. Apple and Daring approach Raven and Dexter, and something I'll get to later as well is that Raven is genuinely a nice person and a good friend to Apple, despite how awful Apple is to Raven. This episode pretty much 
ends in the same way as the last one, except what Milton tells Raven is a bit different. He says, if you don't pledge your destiny, your story will cease to exist. You will cease to exist. Poof. In Maddie in Chief, Raven expresses that she wishes someone would run against Apple for class president, and Maddie chooses to do it. This is also the first episode where we see a fully established divide between who is a royal and who is a rebel. I will take this time to introduce the characters here who I haven't introduced yet. The royals consist of Apple, Briar, Daring, Lizzie Hearts, daughter of the Queen of Hearts, Ashwin Ella, daughter of Cinderella, Blondie Locks, daughter of Goldilocks, and Dexter. Dexter is an odd case, though, where he is more of a rebel by his moral but aligns himself with the royals since he is of royal heritage. The rebels are Raven, Maddie, Cerise Hood, the daughter of Little Red Riding Hood, Cedar Wood, the daughter of Pinocchio, Hunter Huntsman, the son of the Huntsman, and Kitty Cheshire, the daughter of the Cheshire Cat. In The Cat Who Cried Wolf, Cerise confides in Raven and tells her a huge secret. Her mom, Little Red Riding Hood, married the big bad wolf. Uh -huh. Since Cerise's mother didn't follow the storybook, Cerise feels that this will be frowned upon. And not for the obvious reason. When Kitty Cheshire tries to expose Cerise's secret to the entire school, Raven creates a lie saying she cast a speed spell on Cerise, which caused her to run faster. Cerise trusts Raven enough as a friend to tell her the biggest secret in her life, and Raven kept the secret and protected her when it was almost exposed, which says a lot about Raven as a friend. In Catching Raven, Dexter's crush on Raven is developing more as he tries to ask her out to a party. At the end, she ends up asking him, which adds more to her being against conformity. Raven is completely against tradition, and that goes against forced gender rules like boys asking girls to dances or dates. Next is the first Keystone episode, The Tale of Legacy Day. Raven expresses to Maddie that she doesn't know if she can bring herself to sign the storybook of legends. Maddie tells her that she might know somebody who can help. She takes her to the library and they are transported into a secret room where they meet the other grim brother, Giles. Giles was cursed with a spell to speak in riddles, which only Maddie can understand. He tells her that if Raven doesn't sign, her story will continue, but she isn't 100% sure because riddleish isn't an exact language. On Legacy Day, when it is Raven's turn, she sees her destiny and it's filled with hatred, banishment, and cruel punishment. She turns to the crowd and says, Raven Queen, and I'm going to write my own destiny. My happily ever after starts now. And she shuts the storybook of legends. Raven doesn't die, and she exposes Milton for his lie. The royals boo her, and the rebels cheer for her. Raven tries to apologize to Apple, but then freezes time. She expresses that this isn't a selfish decision, which is exactly what Apple thinks her decision is. Raven wants everyone to be able to choose their own destinies, including Apple. When I make a video in the series about Apple, I'll discuss her reaction to Raven's decision in further detail. After this point, the royals and the rebels are more divided than ever, which shows in the day ever after when they all get into a food fight. In the final episode of chapter 1, Replacing Raven, Raven tries to find Apple a new storybook villain to replace her, and Apple still doesn't understand why Raven didn't sign the book. Chapter 2 of Ever After High consists of 20 episodes and 2 specials. A lot of these episodes stay in the realm of an episodic structure, whereas the specials are the Keystone episodes. The first special, True Hearts Day, is a Valentine's Day special that delves into the romances of Ever After High. Raven isn't too prominent in the special, so I'll skim over the plot quickly. See a Cupid, an exchange student from Monster High, finds out about a forbidden holiday called True Hearts Day where people follow their heart. She wants to throw a party to celebrate it, but she has to keep it a secret. Ashlyn and Hunter, a royal and a rebel, are secretly dating. You know, forbidden love, Romeo and Juliet stuff. Duchess Swan, the daughter of Odette from Swan Lake, wants to expose their relationship so she can steal Ashlyn's happy ending and be more popular. Before Duchess can expose them for their relationship, Ashlyn and Hunter make it official to the host school, and this Romeo further divides the school. Apple forces Ashlyn to break up with Hunter, and then at the party, Ashlyn confesses her love to Hunter and declares herself a rebel. As for Raven's parts in this special, Dexter admits that he has a crush on Raven, and he writes her a love poem after getting some advice from C.A. Cupid. He signs the note, D. Ch. 
charming, and Raven thinks that Daring wrote it for her. Whenever Raven finds out about Hunter and Ashlyn's relationship, Raven says she thinks it's great that Hunter and Ashlyn are rewriting the stars and are happy together. At the party, Raven talks to Daring about the poem, and she realizes that Dexter wrote her the poem. She, for the first time in the series, starts experiencing feelings towards Dexter, but she sees him and Cupid holding hands and thinks it's too late for her to share her feelings. Back to episodic stories, Class Confusion, Apple's Birthday Bake Off, and Rebels Got Talent have very similar premises. Raven participates in an activity meant for good fairy tale characters. The royals get upset at the end. Raven's kindness and selflessness is also more shown throughout the series, like when she bakes Apple a cake for her birthday in Apple's Birthday Bake Off, or when she supports Cedar entering a beauty pageant in The Beautiful Truth. Her friendship with Cerise also continues as Raven keeps Cerise's family secret, and Cerise is able to tell someone she trusts about the family she loves. Next is the 45-minute special, Throne Coming. Throne Coming is a school holiday that celebrates the best of the students with a parade, sports game, and ends with a dance, as it is a pun on homecoming. The thing I find interesting is that homecoming parades are more of a college thing. I mean, when I was in high school, we had assemblies for homecoming where they announced homecoming king and queen and there were performances. I was in a K-pop cover dance group in high school and we did performances during homecoming week. Sadly, I only did it once due to COVID, but yeah, back to Ever After High. Raven has a much bigger role in this special than the last one. She ends up in the principal's office because Milton Grimm wants her to reconsider signing the Storybook of Legends since it will be on display to the public during throne coming. She refuses his offer and leaves. Later, when everyone is working on their throne coming floats, Apple says, that Raven will come around to poisoning her. Raven calls out Apple for not listening to her and for her selfishness, and then Apple just guilt trips her and says she's the selfish one for not wanting to be evil as if that's some miserable thing. The next day, all of the students go to Heritage Hall, which is their version of an alumni building, and their parents leave items for them during throne coming. Milton replaces Raven's original item with a coin intended to be dropped in a wishing well. She asks the well what will happen to her friends if she doesn't sign the story Book of Legends, but Milton projects an image of a post-apocalyptic ever after high. Notice how she asked about her friends and not her. Raven, who believes this false image in the well, tells Apple that she wants to sign the storybook of legends. The whole school finds out about it, and this further drives another main character, Briar, to question her status as a royal. Raven gave Briar hope, and now that she wants to sign the book, Briar feels hopeless. Later, Briar calls out Apple on her privilege to not think about other people's destinies since she has the nicest destiny of basically the entire cast. Similarly to Ashlyn, Briar expresses how she wants to deviate from her story, not exactly saying she's a rebel, but she kind of is. At the throne coming parade, as Raven is about to sign the storybook of legends, Cedar Wood, whose gift from her father were lie detecting glasses, reveals that the storybook of legends is a fake. Milton is outraged by Cedar's claims, but Cedar has been cursed to only tell the truth, so Raven sides with Cedar. Raven does try to find the real book, and Maddie takes her and Apple down to Giles to find it. They, alongside a couple other friends, go to find the book in Heritage Hall, but they get stuck in other people's stories. Raven ends up in Apple Story as Snow White in a nightmarish scene with who we can assume to be her mother, telling her, It's your destiny! And Briar ends up in Raven's story as the evil queen. Briar and Raven both escape pretty easily, and Briar expresses empathy towards why Raven doesn't want to carry out her destiny. They all go back to Giles, and with their objective complete, they break Giles's riddle curse. Giles reveals that he believes the evil queen took the real storybook of legends, which he thinks is because she wanted to spread evil to more stories than just her own. However, the Grimm brothers trapped her in a mirror before she could. Giles also reveals that he had the same ideology as Raven to be able to choose your destiny when he was a child, and Milton punished him for that by cursing him to speak riddleish and banished him to the secret basement of the school. They all go to the throne coming dance, but Briar leaves early after she learns that the evil queen hid the storybook of legends under a rug in her dorm. Raven apologizes to Milton, but she catches him in a lie and realizes he was behind the image in the well, and Raven is back to wanting her own destiny without signing the book. Briar throws the storybook of legends down the well, and everyone comes back to the dance. At the end of the dance, Raven is crowned throne coming queen which was voted by fans online ending the chapter with the line you've made this rebel wickedly happy 
Raven starts this chapter by continuing to question the royal ideology of seeing everyone as their parents' actions. In Ginger in the Bread House, she questions the children of Hansel and Gretel after they destroy Ginger Bread House's treats that she made for other students. They do this because Ginger is the daughter of the witch from Hansel and Gretel and they think Ginger is poisoning them. Ginger, similar to Cerise, confides in Raven about the prejudices against her due to her family's history. Next, chronologically, is another special. Spring Unsprung. The students of Ever After High are getting ready for Spring Fairest, a fair to celebrate the start of spring. This special is mostly about the characters from Wonderland, especially Kitty, so Raven doesn't play a massive part in this special either. In Wonderland, Alistair Wonderland, the son of Alice, and Bunny Blanc, the daughter of the White Rabbit, find the storybook of legends and set out to return it. Kitty's mom, the Cheshire Cat, steals the storybook of legends. Kitty and her mom start pulling pranks at the fair until Raven calls out Kitty for hurting people and says that she doesn't have to suck up to her mom, especially if she considers herself a rebel. Kitty gets annoyed at Raven for making it a royal versus rebel issue and says that all she wants is to impress her mom. Alistair reveals to the school that he found the storybook of legends, however nobody knows that this book is yet another fake put there by Kitty's mom. Upon further inspection, Milton exposes the fact that this storybook of legends is a fake. During the Spring Ferris cooking contest, Apple reads one of the riddles in the fake book and this casts the topsy-turvy spell on her, making her blatantly arrogant and mean. This spell also affects Ashwin, Hunter, Poppy, Humphrey, Daring, and Cedar. This spell leads to Apple clogging the portal to Wonderland. Because the portal was clogged, the wonder and magic of Ever After starts to go away, leaving nothing but a dead grayscale world. The Wonderland characters bypass the spell by asking Cedar a lie to get her to tell the truth and they find the book. Raven, Holly, Cerise, and Briar try to appeal to Apple's true self and how she constantly says she wants to protect the world of Ever After. The world falls into despair except for the Wonderland characters and Kitty realizes that she has gone too far. Kitty confronts her mom and learns how to undo the curse. They undo the curse, unclog the puddle to Wonderland, and Ever After High is safe for now. Back to regular episodes, the next couple of episodes are in a short serialized arc about a music festival in the woods. While everyone else is going to the festival, Dexter asks Raven to go see a movie with him. Both Raven and Dexter are worried about making the date perfect. As Dexter and Raven ask for advice, their situations mirror because they both attempt to get advice from not the best people. Raven goes to Blondie, who frequently interrupts to talk about herself and criticize others, and Dexter goes to his brother Daring, who feels he doesn't have to try to impress girls because of his popularity. In Date Night, Raven and Dexter are still anxious and indecisive about their date. Raven gets very uncomfortable about all of the romance surrounding her, and she confesses to Dexter that she's nervous. They both come to the conclusion to just be themselves and not worry about what other people think. Raven also tries to help find Cupid, Poppy, Blondie, and Ashlyn as they've been lost in the woods. The girls are saved and everyone goes to the festival. The next special, Way to Wonderland, takes the characters to Wonderland. Fable Thorne, the daughter of Maleficent, tries to ridicule Raven by talking about how her mother is the reason Ever After High and Wonderland are so closed off because she poisoned Wonderland's magic. Raven acknowledges that it is her mother's fault, but she shouldn't be blamed for something she didn't do, and she kind of makes a fool out of herself in the castle Tyria. Brief summary of the plot of this special is, Lizzie keeps thinking about her mom, and the narrators reveal to Maddie, oh yeah, by the way, Maddie can hear and talk to the narrators, that some is trying to overthrow Lizzie's mom in Wonderland. Raven apologizes to Lizzie and holds herself and her mother accountable. Meanwhile, the evil queen can travel through mirrors and is trying to get Raven to do her bidding. They find a book with her in it and find the Wonderland curse. Everyone thinks Raven is the one who can break the curse, but Raven's magic powers aren't that advanced. They appeal to her selflessness and get her to try to reverse her mother's curse. She reads the curse in reverse, which doesn't work and everyone goes to Wonderland, but everyone thinks Raven lifted it. They learn that she couldn't do it and they get captured by Chase Redford, a knight, and they're sent to Wonderland High. The girls can only leave to save Lizzie's mom and break the Evil Queen's curse if they complete one day of school. Apple and Raven have to work together to win a game of human chess, using Apple's logic and Raven's creativity together. Raven challenges the red and white knights to a dance-off, and the white knight, who is actually Prince Charming's daughter, Darling, wins. The villain of this special, Courtly Jester, has been messing with the girls to stop them from graduating, and reveals that she is the one who's planning to overthrow the Queen of Hearts. Raven, for the first time explicitly says that she's okay with people following their destinies. However, it has always been obvious to me that Raven's stance was to give people the choice of destiny and that if they didn't want their prescribed destiny, they could choose their own. The show and characters, especially Apple, treat this as if Raven only wants people to reject destiny, when that is simply not the case. She sees that Lizzie truly wants to be the Queen of Hearts and tries to help her against Courtly Jester. They eventually escape Wonderland High and they make their way to the Queen. Kitty finds her mom and asks where she put the storybook of legends in 
order to stop Courtly from stealing Lizzie's destiny. She puts it in the Queen's gift room in the castle, but Courtly finds the book before anyone else can. Raven has to use her magic to fight Courtly, who is now using the evil Queen's magic. Raven's powers are too weak, and the only way to make them stronger is if she signs the story Book of Legends. Since signing the book is everything she is against, she can't do it. Apple has a bit of a change of heart and says that she knows that Raven could never be evil because her heart is too good. Raven signs the book to receive full magical powers and she defeats Courtly. Just as Raven, who has been consumed by her mother's evil powers, is about to kill Courtly, Apple appeals to her morality and good heart and Raven comes back to reality. With her new powers, Raven finally removes the curse her mother put on Wonderland. Maddie and Lizzie reunite with their parents. In the end, Briar confesses to sending the book to Wonderland. Apple acknowledges that the book causes more harm than good and Raven destroys the book. She says, Now everyone can write their own story. Whether we want to follow the path of our fairy tale ancestors or blaze a new trail, the choice is in our hearts. Back to chapter 3's standalone episodes, a lot of the episodes discuss how Apple and Raven are in charge of the yearbook, which started in the episode before Way to Wonderland, titled The Legacy Orchard. Most of the episodes have a mention of Apple wanting perfect traditional pictures for the yearbook and Raven wanting imperfect funny pictures so the students can have a memorable laugh. In the final episode of chapter 3, Raven and Apple compromise on having both pretty and silly photos in the yearbook. last episode of Ever After High I will be covering about Raven's story is the chapter 4 opening special, Dragon Games. This special, along with Throne Coming, are the most crucial to Raven's story in Ever After High. Raven has been using her magic to help others at school, but she leaves after a while since she is allowed to visit her mother for one day. Visiting day is happening as well, where the alumni of Ever After High can come to the school. However, Raven has to shortly see her mother since she's in a mirror prison. Raven is also reunited with her pet dragon, Nevermore. The evil queen is disappointed that her daughter is actually a good person, and she tries to tempt Raven into breaking her out of her mirror prison. Prison. Raven tells her mom, I never want to be like you, and her visiting hours end. Raven is empathetic towards Apple's relationship with her mother, Snow White, since Apple experiences similar pressure to act a certain way like the evil queen does to Raven. In the middle of the night, Apple, under pressure, breaks the evil queen out of the mirror. The evil queen, now disguised as an Ever After High student named Mira Shards, is keeping an eye on her daughter. The students find an empty space in the school that used to be a stadium for dragon games, a sport involving competition and dragons, which Raven says was her mom's thing. The evil queen's old dragon, Legend, who is now used by Daring, leaves a bunch of eggs and Raven offers to keep them warm with her magic, but her mother sabotages her, making half the baby dragons good and half evil. Snow White reinstates the dragon games at Ever After High to try to get Apple to be more popular, which causes the feud between the evil queen and Snow White to start once again. Raven Raven confronts her mother, saying, I will never let you hurt my friends, but Snow White grants the evil queen a temporary pardon and allows her to coach a team for dragon games. Raven doesn't trust her mother at all, and her mother chooses Apple to be the leader of her dragon riding team. After one of Snow White's teammates gets injured, Raven takes their place. Apple and Raven compete against each other, and Apple reverts back to telling Raven to fulfill her destiny by wanting to defeat her. Raven calls out Apple once again for her selfishness and refusal to listen, and then leaves the stadium. The evil queen makes it look like Raven is burning down Ever After High in order to get everyone to believe she's evil. Raven flees the school where Apple finds her and tells her that her mother is taking care of the school. This infuriates Raven and Apple tries to defend the evil queen by making Raven sound like a hypocrite. However, by trying to defend her, Raven finds out that Apple was the one who broke the evil queen out of the mirror. Raven tells Apple that she can't be two-faced and play both sides and leaves. With the help of Darling Charming and a few of her friends, Raven tries to run off. Meanwhile, the evil queen has lifted the school above ground and is holding all of the students hostage. Apple finds Raven and apologizes about siding with her mother. Raven forgives her, but Fabel, who was working with the evil queen, poisons Apple. The evil queen sends evil dragons, Raven fights them off. While trying to wake Apple up, Raven expresses a lot of guilt towards Apple, but her friends reassure her that she's never hurt Apple or anybody. Daring, her supposed Prince Charming, kisses her and she doesn't wake up. Raven gives a eulogy in the form of a cautionary tale about how she wishes that Apple was patient enough to wait for her happily ever after. While that eulogy may sound mean, Raven is more upset with her mother than with Apple, and she flies off on her dragon to confront her mother. Raven pretends to be evil to get Fable to switch sides and help her. Meanwhile, Darling kisses Apple, and she wakes up. Apple apologizes for her actions, and she sets out with 
everyone else to save Raven. They all fight the evil queen and Apple and Raven work together to trap the evil queen back into her mirror prison. So now that we know Raven's whole story in Ever After High, let's look at her character through the theatrical lens. I've mentioned in a couple of my videos before that I am a theater tech and design major in college. While my main focus is hair, makeup, and costuming in theater, I have learned a lot about theater history and script analysis while in college. In order to understand a script and understand certain characters, you need to identify a couple of components. These components include identifying the protagonist, the antagonist, given circumstances, and the climax. Starting with protagonist and antagonist, there is a major difference between them on stage and on screen. In film or television, a protagonist is the main character of the story who the audience follows throughout the TV show or film. On the other hand, an antagonist is the character opposing the main character, which is typically an evil villain. In theater, the protagonist is sometimes the main character, but this isn't always the case. A protagonist in theater is the character who actively wants something and is trying to get it, whereas the antagonist is the character causing the conflict in the story and is actively trying to stop the protagonist from achieving their goal. With Ever After High in mind, Raven Queen is the protagonist in the webisodes and through the theatrical lens because she has a clear goal, which is to choose her own destiny. This would make the Royals and Milton Grimm antagonists, but the main antagonist is Apple White because out of everybody, she tries to stop Raven from rewriting her destiny the most. As for given circumstances, they're what causes characters to be and act the way they do. Often these include their personal relationships, backstories, and occupations. Given circumstances play a huge part in Ever After High since a lot of the characters' decisions deal with who their fairy tale parent is. Raven's main given circumstances are that her mother is the evil queen, her best friends are Maddie and Cerise, and that her ancestral destiny is to poison Apple and then be banished and imprisoned forever. These circumstances give the audience insight into Raven as a character and why she makes certain decisions throughout the story. Next is the climax. Similar to protagonist and antagonist, this is very different from on screen to on stage. In a film or TV show, it is the most crucial or exciting part of the television show or film. In theater, the climax is typically towards the end of the play or musical and it is when we as an audience learn whether the protagonists achieve their goal or not. This goal is in the form of a question. What kind of question exactly? The major dramatic question. In theater, the major dramatic question is the question being answered in the play or musical. This question is a yes or no question and is typically formatted like, will the protagonist do something to benefit themselves? For Raven, her major dramatic question is, will Raven choose her own destiny? This is her goal throughout the entire show and it's a pretty straightforward goal. The action she does throughout the show, whether it's taking princessology in the episode Class Confusion, or rejecting the rules of the school, she is always trying to rewrite her story and be her own person. Within this goal, she has other minimal goals alongside her main goal, which include her wanting to be respected for her decision to choose her own destiny and to let everyone have the choice to rewrite their stories. With this major dramatic question, Raven is the protagonist and Apple is the antagonist. While Milton, the rest of the royals, and the evil queen are antagonists throughout the story of Ever After High, Apple is the central antagonist of Raven's story. Out of all of the characters, Apple tries to get in the way of Raven being able to choose her own destiny the most. She constantly tries to convince Raven to sign the storybook of legends and tries to find flaws in Raven's logic, which makes her the main source of conflict in Raven's story. Now for the climax of Raven's story, it's hard to find a definitive climax since Ever After High ended with an unfinished story due to Disney taking the Children of Fairy Tale characters idea and making the Descendants franchise. In the Dragon Game special, there are many foreshadowing hints at more conflict and stories that were supposed to happen in Ever After High. Since Dragon Games is the ending of Raven's main story, the climax is when she helps Apple imprison the evil queen. In this moment, Raven stands up to her mother and cements that she will never follow in her mother's footsteps, which means that she can write her own story. Another interpretation for the climax is a bit later in Dragon Games, when Raven says, we'll see, after her mother says that she can't escape destiny. Raven says this line a bit sarcastically, so she knows that she won't give in to evil and she is able to go on her own path. Now, before I get to the theater elements in Ever After High, I want to discuss a theory since the show was discontinued and didn't get a proper ending. The most popular theory in Ever After High is the switched at birth theory, which is the theory that Apple and Raven were switched at birth. The evidence for this is that Raven and Snow White have black hair, 
whereas Apple has blonde hair. In flashbacks in Enthroned Coming, when Raven is in the Snow White story, the evil queen has platinum blonde hair, just like Apple. It is also mentioned in the books that Apple is the first Snow White descendant to have blonde hair. Another part of this theory is that Apple as a person craves power, fame, and glory, whereas Raven craves peace and unity. While this gets into the topic of nature versus nurture and their personality traits are just theirs and have nothing to do with their family, it could be the show foreshadowing how Raven has the traits of a future Snow White and Queen of Ever after, whereas Apple has the traits of a future evil queen. As far as holes in this theory, many people have said, well then how does Raven have magic and Apple doesn't? Raven's magic could have always been learned rather than her being born with powers. But hey, that's just a theory. A doll theory. Thanks so much for watching. While this theory was never confirmed and there definitely are more details in the books, this could have added a lot to both Raven and Apple's stories, whether just in the story or in the theatrical lens. While we've discussed analyzing Raven Queen through the story of Ever After High, let's look at some other theatrical elements in her character. A central part of Raven as a character that I've been holding off to this part of the video is how her and Apple are foil characters for each other. A foil character is a character that exhibits conflicting or opposite traits to another character to emphasize the traits in the other character. Raven and Apple oppose each other in countless ways. In theater, these conflict themes work similarly to conflicts in literature in the form of something versus something else, such as science versus religion or tradition versus change. The conflict themes that are the most apparent in Raven and Apple's stories are selflessness versus selfishness, royal versus rebel, and princess versus villain. While royal versus rebel and princess versus villain are more given circumstances to the story's conflict, Apple and Raven's main case of being foils is that Apple's selfishness emphasizes Raven's selflessness. Throughout the series, she questions her actions because of her fear of hurting others. While she wishes to choose her own destiny, it's mostly because she's not an evil person and wants to help others. Also, if she had a good happy ending and was destined to act good, that would be a completely different story. She deep down wants to help others as much as she can, which threatens Apple since according to her logic, she needs something bad to happen to her, like Raven poisoning her, to be a good person in society. Some of the other theme conflicts with Apple and Raven are tradition versus rejection, which is basically the same thing as royal versus rebel, and logic versus creativity since Apple is more logical and by the book, whereas Raven is more crafty and artistic. The last one is accountability versus projection, which plays a big part for both of their characters. When Raven does something wrong, she experiences guilt, apologizes, and holds herself accountable. Until the end of Dragon Games, when Apple does something wrong, she projects her insecurities onto others and blames them. You know, I think Apple White would really relate to Set It Off's new album because she really said, Give me a little projector. The last thing for theater elements is my theater specialty, design and color psychology. Raven's main design is a regal, ornate, black and purple dress with silver accents. Her outfit is meant to be reminiscent of the evil queen, along with being an edgy contrast to Apple's pristine look. She also wears purple because it's the color assigned to the rebels. The interesting thing about the colors assigned to the royals and rebels is that although the royals and rebels oppose each other, their colors aren't opposite of the color wheel. Purple and red are analogous colors, which are colors next to each other. There could be many reasons why these colors were chosen, whether it's because they wanted to make a statement about how the characters aren't that different after all and want the same thing, or perhaps because Apple and Raven were already designed, or they knew that the Snow White story was the forefront of Ever After High and the designers just chose their main colors. Speaking of that, Snow White has three main colors, at least in the Disney version red, blue, and yellow. The creators could have easily chosen yellow as the royal's color to have complementary colors, but they intentionally chose red. When I make an episode about Apple, I'll discuss this further, but I think they intentionally chose red as the royal color because of her design and character. Back to Raven's design. In color psychology, purple is used to represent creativity, ambition, and uniqueness. Ironically, purple is also the color of royalty. All of these meanings behind why the color purple is used in media fits Raven as a color perfectly and adds a lot to her character. After high. In conclusion, Raven Queen from Ever After High is a character that has a lot of theatrical elements in her. This will become a series on my channel, so make sure to comment down below any characters you would like to see me analyze in this series. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and turn on the bell for notifications. See you all in the next video! Thank you so much!